Welcome to Unsafe Media. My name is Ryan Martin, and this is the morning meditation series where we grow in wisdom and virtue together because after a century of deconstruction culminating in the Great Awakening, the only real solution is for us to rebuild civilization, rebuild the West with a philosophically and theologically rich vision of what is good, true, and beautiful. And we're going to start by going through a work by Seneca called On the Shortness of Life. Each of these chapters is pretty short, so we get to go through the vast majority of one every time. The majority of mortals, Paulinus, complain bitterly of the spitefulness of nature because we are born for a brief span of life. Because even this space that has been granted to us rushes by so speedily and so swiftly that all save very few find life at the end just when they're getting ready to live. What an incredibly convicting uh, sentence there. So many of us only become uh, or grow into the type of life and the type of person <clears throat> that we desire to be at the very end. We we push off becoming wise until life essentially has its way with us until the, let's say the vicissitudes, that's a fancy word there, right? Uh, of life wear us down and uh, essentially force wisdom upon us. Uh, they, we suffer a crash course because of our stupidity and our foolishness. We are essentially dragged backwards into wisdom. That's hopefully not what we are going to be with. Instead, let's pursue it. Let's actively seek it out. As King Solomon tells his sons, seek it out as a greater treasure than gold or silver. Continuing on, he says, it's not even simply the, the common herd that has this complaint about the shortness of life. It goes all the way up to the, the greatest of thinkers from the greatest physician, who would be uh, Hippocrates, from whom we get the Hippocratic Oath. He apparently said, life is short and art is long. Aristotle himself actually gets in on the action complaining that animals have much longer lives than us but then Seneca does something that actually subverts expectations because he's named his book the shortness of life he's just gone through these other philosophers and thinkers who are complaining about the shortness of life but he says this it's not that we have such a short space of time what's the problem it's that we waste so much of it just a brief interlude while we're talking about subverting expectations. If you haven't joined my Patreon yet, you're probably the kind of person who thought that The Last Jedi's insane plot choices were justifiable because they subverted expectations. Continuing on, he, he drops one of the more convicting passages. He says, Life is long enough and has been given in sufficient generous measure, sufficiently generous measure, to allow the accomplishment of the very greatest things if, this is a massive if, if the whole of it is well invested. Then he goes on to give a pretty beautiful illustration. And we're going to see this is a very similar illustration to something Christ said. Just as great and pricely wealth is scattered in a moment when it comes into the hands of a bad owner, while wealth, wealth, however limited, if it is entrusted to a good guardian, increases by use. So our life is amply long for him who orders it properly. I'm going to say that last line again. Life is sufficiently long for him who who orders it properly. This is almost identical to Jesus's parable of the talents. While the Stoics are really good at grasping the importance and the shallow, or not the shallowness, but the, the vaporous nature of this life, the fact that it passes away and there's only so many things you can control. And while I think they provide basically a, a, a practical answer to the problem of evil, um, while they, they do all of that, they do, I mean, they're not Christian. They, they lack a sufficient theology to ground their ideas. And of course, Christ being the Logos himself, being the, the governing principle, the creator of the world itself, he does ground that, theo that theology. So his parables are going to be significantly more eternal. It, it's going to be the same sort of thing, but he's going to entreat us. Don't think of this vaporous, tiny breath of a life that, that, that is here today and burned up with the grass tomorrow. Don't think of it as the end-all be-all. It, it, it can't be. It isn't. And so if you end up focusing only on this life and not the eternity that lies on the other end of it, you will find yourself in a much, much worse position. So he gives this parable. It will be like a man going on a journey who's called his servants and entrusted them his property, to them his property. To one he gives five talents, to another two, to another one. Now a talent is something like 20 years worth of wages. He who had received five talents went at once and traded with them and made five talents more. We see the same thing happening with the talent person with two talents, but the person with one was so afraid of losing it that he buries it. He who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And the long and short of the story goes that the one who invested his money correctly 
is praised, is lauded, is uh, actually entrusted with more. The same thing with the two talents. But the one who has anything, uh, I've heard Peterson call this the Matthew principle. He who has, sorry, the smallest amount, but hides it, refuses to invest it, ends up having that stripped of him and given to somebody else. And then he is put out in outer darkness to suffer where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what's the takeaway for this morning meditation? It is to realize that your life is a gift, your talents, your, and by that I don't mean like your ability to twirl a baton, um, the, the giftings God has given you are intended to be invested in the world. They are intended to be used for his glory and for your and other people's good. And if you're not investing those, if you're mindlessly scrolling for hours on end, you're wasting that. Now, demographics say that the majority of the people listening to me are young. That's great. Grow up as fast as you possibly can. Do not wait till you're 28 to be a grown up. Not like I did. Do not wait till you're 30 to be a grown up. Do not wait till you're 40 and realize you never grew up. Do it now. Do it as fast as you possibly can. Invest your life. Go start a business. Go find a woman. Go buy a suit. Now is the time to grow and to make mistakes along the way. Now is the time to seek out wisdom is to invest your life, to use it extremely well and receive a return on your investment. Two absolute practical pieces of advice. Number one, stop scrolling. Stop scrolling not to watch my content. Not stop scrolling and keep watching all the things I'm going to say. No, no. Get off your phone. Get off your phone. Open a book. Do something actually productive. Your life will be better. You'll be happier about the way you spent your time. Nobody will be on their deathbed asking, oh God, if only I can have another hour and a half on TikTok. Number two, do a five minute self uh, inventory and ask yourself, are you actually investing your life well? Could you describe the way you're living your life as an investment? And if not, you need to make some changes today. Today is the day. That's it. My name is Ryan Martin. Join the Patreon, like, share, subscribe, send this to somebody who is scrolling endlessly. And until next time, I'm reminding you, trust God.